What do you do when they require two takes for your self-taped audition? Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped, one of the original audition taping services here in Atlanta, Georgia, founded in 2010 with my beautiful, super talented wife, Brooke J. Taylor. Now on to our topic, submitting two takes for your self-taped auditions. As a taping service, we often see actors come in and struggle with how to approach an audition that is requiring two takes. Sometimes there is guidance in their audition instructions and sometimes there isn't. Let's talk about that latter example. Uh, first of all, let me make a general comment about any take that you submit ever. Stop trying to figure out what the casting director or the director wants, because what they want is just an authentic read from you. But more on that at the end of our video. Back to the topic, two takes. You could just pick two different backstories, points of view, action verbs, and run with it. But that can still feel a little overwhelming to actors. If you're familiar with casting director Erica Arvold here on the East Coast, she has her help versus hinder way of looking at auditions. It can be an extremely helpful approach to deciding on one take for your audition or on that second take when it's required. An alternative approach is to think of doing a take for them and a take for you. Let's start with the take that is for them. And please hear me on this. You are not trying to figure out what they want. Instead, it means that before you do any recording, you do all of the necessary research on the showrunner, if it's a TV show, the director, if it's a movie, the network or the studio, the lead actors, and you've also read all the other script pages that have been made available to you. And based on all of that, you're going to intuit what choice you think matches the expectations of the project. However, this is not some cookie cutter read that you're trying to accomplish. Instead, this is going through your mental Rolodex of all the different possible authentic ways that you could nail this audition and thinking, oh, this is the version that is closest to the tone of the show, the director, the network, etc. Then for take two, you choose another authentic read that in your mind would be more fun or interesting to play. Let's look at a sample script that I just came up with off the top of my head. Interior, restaurant, day. A server walks into frame, interrupting the tense scene between our two leads. He blurts out, who's ready for some dessert? The leads stare at him, he gets the hint. Okay, I'll just go grab your check. Server exits. Very simple scene. Let's look at the first take, which would be for them. Let's say that my research for the show reveals that all of the co-stars on this show are always very grounded, very real, very natural, and don't tend to distract from the other elements of the scene, especially the lead characters. With that in mind, my version for them would involve me getting in and out of the scene as quickly as possible, providing as little distraction to the leads as I can. In fact, if this is the version that ends up booking me, I should expect to not actually get a lot of coverage in the final edit. A little disappointing for your reel, but understandable given the tone of the show. So let's look at a sample take one. Who's ready for some dessert? Okay, I'll just go grab your check. As you can see, I got in and I got out without any fanfare. And I remained grounded and natural, hopefully. Now let's look at the version that is for me. Who's ready for some dessert? Okay, well, I'll just go grab your check then. You can see here, I'm trying to show a little bit more personality and I'm trying to explore the silent moments just a tad. I'm not stealing the scene, but I am breathing a little bit more life into this character because like I said, that's what would make this performance a little bit more fulfilling for me. Keep in mind that unlike the title of this video, if I was only allowed to submit one take for the project, then I would need to use my taste and judgment to determine which take fits the tone of the project better and not which one fits my ego better. As a bonus, I did a third take for you. Let's watch that. Who is ready for some dessert? Chocolate cake, tiramisu. Uh, I'll just go grab your check then. Okay, in this one, I'm definitely chewing the scenery and pausing the progress of dialogue between the two leads in the project. I'm forcing those leads to notice me, and by extension, I'm forcing the camera to notice me. This third take would be way too extreme for most of the projects that we see here in the Southeast, or I should say more specifically, 
most of the co-star roles that we see here in the Southeast. So I'm not recommending you do this, ever. But once again, using your own taste and judgment, if this is perhaps a pilot to a new show or a movie, in which case you may not know what the intended tone is, then you might decide that a take like this is worth the risk. But that should be based on your relationship with your agent and with that casting office as to whether it will be received as it's intended and not looked at as some sort of, oh my gosh, why did you do this? This is way too much. So again, use your own taste and judgment. Hey Matt, you might be saying, what if they don't explicitly ask for two takes? Is it all right to submit two takes? Well, that answer is a lot more nuanced. So for the sake of brevity, here's my general rule of thumb. Don't ever submit a second take just because. You should have a very good reason for submitting that second take unsolicited. And hear me on this, those two takes better be different. If you just submit a carbon copy of the same take, then you'll be blowing your chances with that casting office. And hopefully you have some people in your life, a mentor, a manager, or some peers that you can bounce your ideas off of to determine whether it's a good idea to submit that second take. And before we wrap up, I just wanted to talk generally about your self tapes. Stop trying to please the casting director or your agent or anybody else. Stop trying to live into some made up expectation of what you think they think the role should be. Instead, look at it this way. Every take you submit ever for any audition should represent a choice that you can stand behind and that you would be comfortable playing for eight hours a day on set. Because if your own choice doesn't fulfill you artistically, it's going to be a struggle on set. Be warned, if you have to spend an hour in the audition waiting room getting into the headspace and holding on to that choice for dear life just to give one good take, then God forbid you actually book it. Because there are a thousand distractions on set and you better believe that the worst case scenario is going to happen. They're going to put your scene first up at 7 a.m. before you've had your morning coffee. Then you're going to have to do take after take after take. And they're going to want to do a pickup in the middle of the scene where you're already at your most emotional. And it's going to be really tough. What I'm saying is make sure the choices you make in the audition are choices that you can easily replicate on set under the pressure of 30 people staring at you, a director that's in a bad mood, a co-star that had to go to lunch early and so you're just acting to a piece of tape and all the other obstacles you will face on set. So once again, the underlying theme here is to take ownership of your career. Stop trying to live into expectations that don't even exist. You have your training, hopefully, and you've done your research. Now trust those choices and trust your instincts to guide you to do the best take possible for you. And make sure any choice you make is something that you can stand behind and do comfortably eight hours a day on set. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on set.